Cinderella steals all the thunder from her wicked half-sister's wedding. My cousin Lauren has always been bullied by her half-sisters. When the oldest was getting married, it was all too predictable that she wouldn't want Lauren to be a bridesmaid. But cutting Lauren loose turned out to be the worst move imaginable. Since Lauren didn't have to dress like the rest of the wedding party, she was free to come in her own clothing. And that girl looked good. She was practically the only woman at the wedding who commanded any attention all night. I wanted to post this when it first happened, but my partner wouldn't let me until some time had passed so it wouldn't get back to the family. He actually insisted I wait one whole year, thinking I would lose interest and forget about it. <laughs> but no, I marked the date down on my calendar, and I've been counting down the weeks ever since. And now my special day is finally here. I have four cousins, a family of four daughters, each a year or two in age to the next. The eldest three are full sisters, and the youngest is a half-sister. For as long as I've known them, back to when we were kids, they've always ganged up and been mean to the youngest. This extended into school, where this girl would be mercilessly mocked and teased by the other students. Sadly, she never really had a proper group of friends. The three eldest daughters weren't ugly as such, just sort of plain. The youngest, however, seemed to get the exact right combination of genes that her sisters lacked. Even from a very young age, you could tell she was going to be pretty when she was older, blessed with perfect facial features and genetics. But she started out very much a diamond in the rough. When she was 9 or 10, she started having huge growth spurts, and quickly became tall and lanky. She was sort of ungainly and awkward in movement, with poor posture. She didn't look after her hair, wore poorly fitting mismatched clothes and so on, all of which were topics she was constantly teased about. I always felt bad for her, as she's always been a kind-hearted person. But she's always been one of those people that never really realized that when the other kids were interacting with her, they were actually teasing her. She would always be falling for pranks and tricks they played on her. Perhaps this naivety was a good thing, as it left her innocent kindness intact. Anyway, long story short, at some point she was spotted by a scout who saw her potential, and she was signed to a modeling agency straight out of high school. First chance she had, she got the heck out of town, and eventually out of the country. Since then, she's done very well for herself, mastering the art of being a fashion model, all while appearing on magazine covers, posters, websites, doing fashion shows, and so on. Even now, she still works as a model and has her own little business in the fashion industry. For the sake of this story, I'll call her Lauren the Model. Alright, we need to pause the story for just a second to mention a couple of things. First of all, I'm calling out this original poster for using the phrase, long story short. This might actually be the longest story I've ever covered on this channel. Second, OP goes out of her way to mention that she always felt bad for Lauren. You're going to want to remember that later. In any case, back to the story. If you made it this far in the video, consider liking and subscribing for more videos coming. Fast forward to a year and a half ago and the eldest sister is getting married. I was roped into the group of girls tasked with organizing a bridal shower and bachelorette party. But the bride-to-be and bridesmaids were so disorganized that this group quickly devolved into just trying to get the wedding itself off the ground. From the very beginning, the main concern of the bride-to-be was that she was the shining center of attention, surrounded by a circle of bridesmaids that were perfect in every way, but not so perfect as to outshine her. Each of the bridesmaids also had the same mentality, make sure you look better than the next girl down the pecking order. This is par for the course, but this particular bride-to-be and her two mean sisters had something else to contend with. A younger sibling who sort of looks like you, only prettier in every single way. They soon realized this, and their goal quickly became trying to find some way to tactfully exclude Lauren from the bridal party. If they could achieve this, then good. But if, at the same time, they could make themselves look good by making Lauren look bad, then even better. This was never done directly, of course, but always in some backhanded manner. Incredibly, Lauren was never even initially invited to be a bridesmaid, despite the other two sisters being included along with the bride's two best friends under the pretense of her not living here and not being able to help with the planning. This was somewhat understandable, as Lauren lives and works overseas. But she was coming back for the wedding anyway, and offered to come four weeks earlier in order to help out. Problem solved, I thought. But no, it was never going to be that easy. The next few months of our group's physical meetups and online group chats became brainstorming ways to somehow exclude Lauren by creating problems, and then Lauren innocently finding a solution. The first bright idea from the bride-to-be was that the bridesmaids were going to have matching dresses made, 
and of course Lauren could not be a bridesmaid because she wasn't here to get measured and have her dress fitted. This plan failed miserably, of course, as Lauren literally worked in the fashion industry. She even suggested the bridesmaids get measured and then send the details to her office, and she would pay to get dresses made locally as a wedding gift. The next idea from one of the friends was, actually, I think it would be prettier if we each just got our own dress, but all to a theme that was unique and really uncommon and unlike anything else. The bride-to-be loved this idea, thinking that they could pick out some strange theme that Lauren wouldn't easily be able to get. They also decided that the dress code for the wedding would now be black tie, so all the bridesmaids would be in full gowns, and therefore it wouldn't be fair for Lauren to have to pay for them all. Lauren was fine with this and asked what the theme was. I don't recall exactly what the first theme was. We changed our minds multiple times. But it was always some obscure combination, like sequin mint green gowns, white shawls, and strappy silver heels. At our next meeting, we saw that Lauren had sent an email with some photos of her in various dresses and asked us which of them we wanted her to wear to the wedding. When the bride-to-be saw the photos, she flipped out. Here was Lauren looking stunning in designer gown after designer gown, each more opulent than the last, and each in a beautifully shimmering sequin mint green. She even wore a different pair of silver heels to match each dress. We changed our mind on the theme several more times since then, always to progressively more obscure concepts. But every time, Lauren would send through a series of photos of her in beautiful gowns, always perfectly matching the theme. After all, she had access to a veritable warehouse of designer clothes. The true irony was that some of the themes were just horrible, thought up by people with little fashion sense. Things like pink combined with mustard. Yet we'd get these photos of Lauren somehow making it look good. Okay, I need to pause again. Remember how I told you to remember OP's sympathy for Lauren? So where is that now, while she's watching these girls conspire to keep Lauren out of the wedding? She could easily tell Lauren what's happening, but she's just sitting back and staying silent, so I guess she doesn't feel that bad for Lauren. Also, I'm not sure which part is funnier, the fact that they thought a fashion model wouldn't be able to get sequins, or the fact that mint green sequins are something that supposedly tons of high-end designers have worked with. If you're starting to wonder if this story could possibly be real, you aren't alone, especially given details like Lauren being able to pull off pink and mustard. This OP seems to think that having fashion sense means you just magically look good in anything, even if it looks objectively terrible. I don't think that's how fashion sense works. But let's drop back in on the story. It was at this point that the bride-to-be was starting to realize that perhaps black tie wasn't such a good idea after all as even if Lauren was successfully excluded from the bridal party, if the guests caught a glimpse of her gliding around the wedding hall in one of these gowns, it was going to be trouble. In the end, it was decided that only the two best friends of the bride-to-be would be bridesmaids, and not the sisters. But no final plans had been made. This was, of course, not true, as I knew there was no way those two mean sisters were not going to be bridesmaids. But this became our standing order. No final plans had been made. It was also decided that only the bridesmaids and groomsmen would be in black tie. Everyone else would just be cocktail or smart casual, but no final plans had been made. It was also repeatedly mentioned to Lauren that the wedding was going to be a smaller, informal affair, when in fact the plan had always been that it would be big. Something like 200 guests were shortlisted. Anyway, problem solved. Lauren wasn't going to be bridesmaid, and the wedding was small enough that she wasn't going to be needed to be part of a bridal party. She could just be a regular guest and enjoy herself. There was a collective sigh of relief when Lauren told us she had booked a flight to arrive the night before the wedding. But the saga wasn't over. The bride-to-be and her clique became fixated on what Lauren was going to wear to the wedding, I guess to make sure she didn't turn up looking too good. This is where they became their most witchy and catty as time went backwards and we re-entered high school. They casually messaged Lauren, asking if she could send a photo of what she thought she might wear. From here, it was always the same. Lauren would send a photo, the girls would message back saying it was too dressy or too formal, and then constantly grouse about her afterwards. She sent a photo of her in a blue velvet dress with a plunge neckline and got back a reply like, It's a little too low cut. We were hoping for a slightly more reserved look for the wedding. Then afterwards it was all, OMG, what a floozy. 
She sent a photo of her looking perfect in a cocktail dress with full hair and makeup, full jewelry and accessories, and the comments afterwards were things like, OMG, what a stuck-up showy biscuit, when it was obvious she had literally just come from a photo shoot. Her hair and makeup people were still visible in the background. The final straw for me personally was when Lauren woke herself up at 2 a.m. her time to send some additional dress photos after everything else had been rejected. She was in Italy at the time and was getting desperate for something to be approved. The comments afterwards? OMG, what a slovenly biscuit. She didn't even make an effort to look nice. By this stage, I had enough. It was eight weeks to the wedding, so myself and this other girl in the group hastily threw together a plan for a bridal shower and hired an event planner to organize a wine tour for the bachelorette party. I wasn't so much involved in the planning anymore, but I think at some point someone had been open and honest with Lauren and told her that the bride-to-be was worried that Lauren would inadvertently draw too much attention, that it was the bride's special day to shine, and asked if she could please wear something understated. I don't know how exactly the girls managed to pull it off, probably some combination of peer pressure and trickery, but they somehow got Lauren to agree she would just go super casual and wear jeans and a nice shirt, and just try to stay in the background. Cool, it was settled then. Lauren would be wearing jeans and a shirt. Time to start changing those final plans. Nothing was done officially, of course, but week by week, the guest list would increase, the venue would be upgraded, and all the stops would be pulled. Comments and messages would go out about how the bride-to-be really wanted to be a formal dressy affair. The bridal shower came and went and was a big success. The bachelorette party, less so. At least I had fun. The saddest thing was that on the day of the bridal shower, a package arrived from Italy, a set of beautiful Venetian glassware as a gift from Lauren. Wait a minute, so OP's not even a bridesmaid, but she planned both the bridal shower and the bachelorette party while everybody else just obsessed over how to mess with Lauren? Doesn't the maid of honor plan both of those things? And just how far in advance can you change things like a wedding venue without a lot of money and prior planning going to waste? This girl's hatred for this one girl is so outrageous, she's willing to risk the quality of her entire wedding over it. I'm honestly not even judging, that's pretty impressive. I'm excited to see how this ends. The big day was finally here. The final tally of bridesmaids was exactly how it started. The two older sisters and the two best friends. The chapel was packed. Everyone very well dressed. And then in walks my beautiful cousin Lauren. She was in jeans, true to her word. I saw in her eyes that, for an instant, she thought she had walked into the wrong wedding. But then she spotted her sisters and her heart sank. The bridesmaids were all in full floor-length burgundy gowns. Mortified, she crept to the back of the chapel. I went over to say hello and sit with her, and this is where things started to turn around. For although Lauren was dressed casually, she still looked stunning. Designer jeans with adorable little cuffs at the shin, lovely blouse with matching accessories, and a blazer gracefully draped over her shoulders. Topping it off were a pair of blush pink slingback Louboutins, she was just gorgeous. However, it was in the reception hall afterwards where the wedding-shaming gods really started to shine their favor upon her. From the get-go, Lauren was the undisputed center of attention. People were constantly talking about how chic she looked, commenting on how people with true fashion sense always look good, only a truly fashionable person could pull it off, and so on. The sort of vibe around her was as if she was some A-list celebrity, and it was purely because she stood out against this uniform backdrop of semi-bland formal attire. The bride's plan had backfired. If they had just let her wear a simple dress, she would have just blended in and wouldn't have drawn anywhere near as much attention. All night, the young daughters of the other guests swarmed around her like a Disney princess, wanting to be her friend and ask her questions. All night, the single guys were trying to get her to dance. When she finally relented, she put the rest of the bridal party to shame. They had opted to wear two high heels that they could barely walk in, let alone dance. Yet at the center of it all was Lauren, the catwalk model, gliding and twirling in her $700 5-inch stilettos. In the end, it was sort of a karmic ending. The bride and bridesmaids were drunk and had a great time and thought they were the bomb, while the other 200 guests realized just how tacky they were next to Lauren. I just hope that Lauren herself wasn't too upset. 
I overheard someone ask her why she wasn't sitting at the table with the other sisters and family members, and she said, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it back for the wedding, and they had to make a final decision on the seating arrangements. I suspect she was brief to say that. Truthfully, however, I don't think she feels much connection to her family anymore. I'm starting to suspect that, from the very beginning, her only intention was to support her sister in whatever form that support might take. To be there or not to be there, as much or as little her sister wanted. In the end, one final gem nicely capped off the whole saga a few days later. Our local news media website has a social section with weekly photos of the in-crowd out and about the town. In it, there was a nice picture of Lauren standing outside the chapel, the bride a blurry white smudge in the background. The caption read, Lauren, back from Milan, drops in to congratulate local bride. Okay, so this wedding was supposed to have taken place in July of 2021. So right off the bat, I'm calling shenanigans on everyone bending over backward to compliment this chick on how graceful her blazer looks. Women's blazers did have a popularity surge last fall, but not as early as July. While we're at it, I also have a problem with the fact that Lauren's somehow the only woman at the entire wedding who can dance in heels. Even I can dance in heels, it's not that hard. But the detail that really gets me is when OP says Lauren was brief to lie to people. So these evil sisters all lied to Lauren to hide the fact that they were keeping her out of the bridal party, but then, after lying to her, they briefed her on how to maintain the lie? That's utterly bizarre. Then again, so is a wedding full of 200 people going absolutely bananas over some chicken jeans. Again, I really don't think fashion sense is the superpower this OP thinks it is. Of course, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this entire story makes perfect sense, and I'm just overly cynical. What do you think? Can a pair of jeans drive little girls and single guys mad for an evening? Or is it more likely that Lauren just has some sort of mutant pheromone she's excreting? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.